بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم our first integral is x from 0 to infinity x sin x to the power 4 divided by cosine x plus the hyperbolic cosine of x let's call this integral omega let's start by studying this sum over positive integer n of minus 1 to the power n e to the minus n x e to the i n x where x is a positive real number as we will see the summation has a closed form that is very close to what we see here in the integrand the summand can be written as minus e to the minus x e to the i x all to the power n because x is strictly positive, the magnitude of minus e to the minus x e to the i x is strictly less than 1. This is a convergent geometric series. When we sum, we get the first term. Divided by 1 minus the ratio, we have 1 plus e to the minus x e to the i x. We can write the denominator as e to the x over 2, e to the minus i x over 2, plus e to the minus x over 2, e to the i x over 2. We are taking e to the minus x over 2, e to the i x over 2 as a common factor. This bracket is this one. We multiply and divide by this bracket, and we take the imaginary part of both sides. In the sum, e to the i n x becomes sine n x. Then we need to take the imaginary part of this quantity. Multiplying these two brackets, we get e to the x plus e to the minus x plus e to the i x plus e to the minus i x. This part is e to the minus x plus i x plus 1 minus i x over 2. This is e to the minus x over 2 plus i x over 2, or e to the x over 2 between brackets i minus 1. When this part is multiplied by the bracket, we get e to the i x plus e to the minus x. If we go back to this denominator, the first two terms are 2 times the hyperbolic cosine of x. These two are equal to 2 cosine x. The numerator is cosine x plus e to the minus x plus i sine x. When we take the imaginary part, we obtain sine x in the numerator. The sum over positive integer n of minus 1 to the n e to the minus n x sine n x is equal to minus one half sine x divided by cosine x plus the hyperbolic cosine of x. The integrand is equal to this sum times minus two x, the cube of sine x. Interchange the order of summation and integration. Integral of interest, big omega, is two times summation n from one to infinity, minus one to the n minus one, integral x from zero to infinity, x, the cube of sine x, e to the minus n x, sine n x. Sine x cubed is 3 fourth sine x minus 1 fourth sine 3x. Take 1 eighth as a common factor. We get 1 fourth outside the sum. Inside the integral, we have 6 sine x sine nx minus 2 sine 3x sine nx. We apply this rule. 2 sine a sine b is cosine the difference minus cosine the sum. From here, we get 3 cosine x times n minus 1 minus 3 cosine x times n plus 1. From this term, we get minus cosine x times n minus 3 plus cosine x times n plus 3. We can do integration by parts to obtain that integral x from 0 to infinity, x e to the minus nx times cosine ax is n squared minus a squared divided by the square of n squared plus a squared. We apply this result to the integrals here, replacing a by n minus 1, n plus 1, n minus 3, and n plus 3. Now we have converted omega into an infinite sum. Let's take these two terms together and the other two together. Note that this term is exactly this one if we replace small n by small n plus 1. We can also change this plus sign into a minus sign and rewrite minus 1 to the power n minus 1 as minus 1 to the power n plus 1 minus 1. If this is a function g of n, this is exactly g of n plus 1. We have a sum n from 1 to infinity g of n minus g of n plus 1. We can imagine that this is limit as big n tends to infinity of sum over positive integer small n of g of n minus g of n plus 1. This is a telescopic sum equal to g of 1 minus the limit as big n tends to infinity of g of big n plus 1. If we replace a small n by 1 here, we get 3 over 4. If we replace a small n by big n plus 1, then take the limit as big n tends to infinity, we get zero. We have a portic polynomial in the denominator and a polynomial of degree one in the numerator. The sum applied to these two terms is three over four. What about these two terms? If we replace n here by n plus three, we get six n plus 18 minus nine, that's six n plus nine. We can also check the denominator. This quantity is exactly this one, replacing n by n plus three. If this is h of n, this is h of n plus 3. We have another telescopic sum. Limit, big N tends to infinity. Summation, small n from 1 to big N. h of n minus h of n plus 3. 
let's write down the first and last few terms here. When we carry out the sum, the survivors are the first three terms, h of 1 plus h of 2 plus h of 3. Then we need to take the limit as big N tends to infinity of h of n plus 1 plus h of n plus 2 plus h of n plus 3. Every term here tends to 0 as n tends to infinity. The sum of these three terms is minus 29 over 225. This result is multiplied by minus 1 over 4, then added to 3 over 4. Our integral of interest is equal to 176 over 225. The second integral is x from 0 to infinity, 2 minus this fraction. In the numerator, we have 3x to the power alpha plus 2x to the power 3 alpha. In the denominator, we have 1 plus x to the power 2 alpha or to the power 3 over 2. Alpha is a real number strictly greater than 1 fourth. Note that the integrand tends to 0 as x tends to infinity, because this ratio here tends to 2. As x gets very large, this term dominates the numerator. This one dominates downstairs. The limit of this ratio is 2 as x tends to infinity. The pattern that we see here is related to the antiderivative of 1 plus y squared all to the power minus 5 over 2. If we do the substitution, y equal to 10u. 1 plus y squared is 1 plus 10 squared u, which is sec u squared dy is sec squared u du. This product has the secant of u raised to the power minus 3. The integrand is the cube of cosine u. I split this as cosine u and cosine squared u, which is 1 minus sine u squared. If v is equal to sine u, we have integral 1 minus v squared dv. Carrying out the integration, we get v minus 1 third v cubed. That's sine u minus 1 third sine u cubed. The tangent of u is y sine u is y divided by the square root of 1 plus y squared. The antiderivative is y times 1 plus y squared to the power minus 1 half minus 1 third y cubed 1 plus y squared to the power minus 3 over 2. Take this as a common factor. We are left with y times 1 plus y squared minus y cubed over 3. Inside this bracket, we get y plus 2y cubed over 3. If we take 1 over 3 as a common factor, the antiderivative of 1 plus y squared to the power minus 5 over 2 is 1 over 3, 3y plus 2y cubed divided by 1 plus y squared to the power 3 over 2. Without one third, this is exactly the form that we see here. We can write the integrand as integral over y from x to the alpha to infinity, 3 divided by 1 plus y squared raised to the power 5 over 2. Let's do the change of variables, y equal to x to the power alpha times t. When y is equal to x to the alpha, t is equal to 1. When y tends to infinity, t tends to infinity. dy is x to the alpha dt. y squared is x to the power 2 alpha times t squared. Integrate first with respect to x. Let's do the substitution. u equal to t squared times x to the 2 alpha. Downstairs, we get 1 plus u to the power 5 over 2. When x is 0, u is 0. When x tends to plus infinity, u tends to plus infinity. x to the alpha is the square root of u divided by t dx is u to the power 1 over 2 alpha minus 1, t to the minus 1 over alpha du. We can take 3 over 2 alpha outside. We have the function of t, t to the power minus 1 minus 1 over alpha. The inner integral is with respect to u from 0 to infinity, u to the power 1 over 2 alpha minus 1 half, divided by 1 plus u to the power 5 over 2. An integral representation of the beta function when the real parts of z1 and z2 are positive is integral u from 0 to infinity, u to the z1 minus 1 over 1 plus u to the power z1 plus z2. Comparing with what we have here, the inner integral is beta of 1 over 2 alpha plus 1 half and 5 over 2 minus 1 over 2 alpha minus 1 half. That's 2 minus 1 over 2 alpha. The integral with respect to t yields alpha. Recall that in the problem statement, alpha is greater than 1 over 4. This means that 1 over 2 alpha is strictly less than 2. This argument here is strictly positive. Data of Z1 and Z2 is gamma of Z1, gamma of Z2, divided by gamma of the sum. The sum is 5 over 2. Gamma 5 over 2 is 3 over 2, 1 half times the square root of pi. Our integral of interest is 2 divided by the square root of pi, gamma of 1 half plus 1 over 2 alpha, times gamma of 2 minus 1 over 2 alpha. 